tons and tons of data acquisition on here so we can really evaluate everything on the car. All right, let's go back to my pocket. Thank you. Uh, one thing cool about this truck here is the bed in it is awesome. As you see here, we have tons and tons of room and storage. We've already started to put the parts that we've taken off this car in the bed. And I'm going to get ready for tonight's show. So thank you for tuning in. And um, let me get this thing placed. Daniel's doing a little walk around there for the Facebook group as well. I'll turn that screen to get rid of some of the glare there. Thank you. Is that better there? All right. Perfect. Again, thank you for tuning in tonight. 10 minute walk around, sorry about that. Need just a couple minutes to, to get prepared. One of the cool things about being involved in, in all aspects of this company is I've been able to see you know nice letters that come in. Obviously the, um, the letters that some people either like what we're doing, the other people don't like what we're doing, or concerned on what the process takes. But I just want everybody to, to understand, we launched the idea, the idea of being a UTV manufacturer at Sand Sports 2019. Uh, we built some prototype cars and brought them down there, and the response was overwhelming on the excitement. We walked out of Sand Sports, with 167 cars sold, and we were all in shock, to be honest with you. And we knew we had something special. Obviously, I've been in the off-road business my whole life. And um, from that point on, and even before that, uh, we have been working with manufacturers, uh, suppliers, engineering groups. Um, I got the guys from Capture 3D in tonight uh, to show you guys some of the stuff we do to uh, expedite our processes um, so that we can, one, build quality parts, and if we have issues, we can either first check them to make sure that the tolerance was what we originally spec'd, or if we have an ongoing issue, which we had obviously with the, the primary and secondary clutches a few weeks ago. So this is the cool part about it, is we can bring the guys in, we can evaluate it, we can get the data. These guys are, um, are literally right down the street from us here in Charlotte. And that is um, one thing pretty cool about being located here. Um, this is pretty much motorsports capital um, in America today. Um, and we're able to get things done quick. Uh, Joey Arrington, the engine shop's here. Um, but then again, we used guys like Weddell out in California or Ray from Dugan's. You saw our video last week. We were over at his four-wheel drive dyno. We're using a lot of the experts in the industry to help us um, with this project. So, uh, is that camera lining up on me good on the Insta? Is that okay? Perfect. Yep, on Insta, I'm, I'm good, or does it need to turn a little bit? All right. All right, I'm gonna probably block the screen, or is that gonna show the screen okay too? All right, excellent. Design presentation 34, I'm getting that loaded up here. All right, it's loaded up behind me here. Um, I want to thank Daniel for his continued dedication to this project and getting um, this thing, um, helping us with, with the preparation of the decks or engineering. Uh, we've got the full team uh, here right now. Um, Mike Nemec is back on board, which is a pleasure to have him back on board with this project. Uh, he was my, my lead engineer on the, um, the Textron XX, which started as the Articap project and um, Mike has come back on board a, about a month ago, and Matt Taylor is in, so we've got, um, we got some heavy hitters in the engineering department here this week uh, doing the, fi the final stuff, so uh, gathering data that we learned at the last test, 
and um, continue to make progress. Uh, this is a pretty cool picture. Um, when we were testing in the desert, um, the torque limiter was working really good, and it helped us a lot um, understand where we're at. And there's, what I'm talking about, torque limiter, there's a torque limiter between the rear differential and the front and the differential. If it sees a spike, it slips. But when we were there in the sand with 35-inch tall tires, we noticed we had some slipping. And from the time the car, Randy Rodriguez picked up the truck and hauled it to the east here to Charlotte, we had already had uh, an, another engineering uh, stack basically built up. Yeah, Daniel's gonna bring that over. I think that's pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, this one here, he said, is the burnt up one. And this is stuff that I hope you guys can appreciate is we're, we're sharing with you uh, what we're doing here. But these clutch discs, all these clutch discs here, are clutch discs that we tested with in Arizona. And now we've got a few different loaded packs of clutch discs. And just because we burned it up slipping doesn't mean we have a problem. That just means we need to understand and optimize the package. Uh, but these clutch discs slide, slide inside here. It's got a dog here that engages it into um, two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. And when it's in four-wheel drive, we actually use these torque limiters to, um, to let them slip when we see spikes in the drive line, which that'll make the CVs stronger and more reliable. Um, and um, hope that doesn't die. Thank you. I uh, see it was charging. Yeah, it says it's charging now. Good. Okay. All right. So um, one thing we want to do is we want to come back and we want to climb walls. And that's exactly what we did is basically put the thing up against the wall. Think about King of the Hammers. It looks like I'm sleeping in there. I got a bunch of guys saying, what, Robbie's sleeping in there? But what we're doing is that, that was when I climbed the wall with three wheels. And then we climbed the wall straight up with four wheels straight against it. And basically just pop it up on a, on a wall. And if we can do that, we can optimize the torque, and that's what we're playing with inside these clutches. Um, this is obviously something uh, you would have to unbolt the front end to change the torque on these for different aspects. But I want everybody to understand when we took on this project to build a production UTV, it wasn't just to build a race car, it was to build you guys something that was reliable. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have a bunch of uh, machines from other competitors, and they're, and they're great machines. But when you start to push them really hard, you guys all know you have failures with them. And what we're trying to do is give you the best product we can possibly do that has safety limits built into it right from the scrap, right from the get-go. Um, over here we have uh, the oil tank. And the reason for showing you oil tank tonight is when we got back from the test, um, we did another feature that just hit home with us. Uh, we were out there in the desert, in the sand. There was a bunch of dirt all around this area right here. And obviously, if we could take this off, if any crumbs got in here, it would go straight here into the oil um, pump and then straight into your bearings. And we filter the motor on the way out of the engine. So uh, this here allows us to filter it on the way into the engine which if you dropped a couple clumps of mud or dirt in there, we'd catch it on this spin-on filter. So this is a feature that has been added um, since testing. And I just want to share some of the things that we're doing to, um, to make it more reliable. Um, you know, and please understand, when we do something like this, there's a cost. There's another forging. There's a process here. we got to get filters. This is an added cost on our side that we're going to pass on to you guys. So like I said, just, just work with us here because we're trying to make you the best car we possibly can. Um, tires and wheels. Um, all right, basically the, uh, what Daniel's saying here is uh, these are, that's a silver powder coated wheel there. Uh, these are off of the assembly line. Um, and these are, are now production wheels. So. No longer a prototype, out of castings, out of forgings. I know we showed you stuff this last week, but um, hopefully we have some more stuff. Did we get a tire too? Uh, yes, we'll post that later. Uh, today? We will post the tire later today. We do have our production tires now as well. Um, 
testing, you know, I, I think uh, everybody understands, but going out to the desert and testing, people are like, oh, cool, you're going to go drive the UTV. It's way more involved than just going out and driving the UTV, even though it's, it's really fun at times. Um, some of it's tedious because you have to either maintain the same speed at all times or trying to manage um, clutch levels. What do I need to do? That one? All right. Just uh, trying to keep all these things between Facebook and Insta um, going. But it's, um, it's really for evaluating parts, and it's for evaluating temperatures. And you saw the first test, the second test. Um, we threw a four-wheel dyno test in the middle of those two tests. And then we put basically a full heart monitor system on the car uh, with a completely new added um, system of MoTeC to gather as much data as we can from temperatures to pressures of every line in, every line out. And now, as I said, the guys are here. They're, they're evaluating all that data. Uh, we're improving the systems and um, making a more reliable car. And so tonight, um, I have invited Jeff. Uh, you want to come on up? And we'll then turn cameras here in a minute. We'll start over here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, this that's is fine. Jeff Bush. He's walking through our maze Thanks of so wires much. back here. Uh, Jeff is a is a local business here in Charlotte. We became friends um, about a year ago. I started yeah. telling them, hey, we got this project coming, and they have been working with us on spindles, clutches, engine components, water lines, um, you know, clutch parts like this, when we get them hot, how much do they warp. Their machine will allow us to evaluate this information. So I'd like uh, maybe to hand over the mic to, uh, to Jeff for a few minutes. I'll stick with you and we can walk sure. over um, and show everybody what we have and some of the, the things you, you use uh, to gather data. Obviously there, we see we've got a car in the background. You're scanning some kind of a body there? Yeah, that's a full body and white vehicle. So in addition to the manual setups like we, could, like we brought here tonight, we also have full autom fully automated systems that you know autom automotive production plants will bring in into their inspection rooms and gather data on an entire body in white and average time to that's usually between 35 and 40 minutes yeah and we can have a full field representation of that vehicle yeah so if you guys think about it we build a part we go test it we think maybe it changed or it wore out or it's, it's warped or something we can send it back to jeff he can come back and say yes it moved here it did this that's correct. and it allows us to expedite the manufacturing process yeah, it makes that decision-making process from looking at something and, and assuming maybe it failed here, maybe it didn't fail here. You know, we can actually go and scan the part, give you a digital twin of it, and it takes all that guesswork out of understanding what happened to the part, or, or maybe it was a manufacturing issue, right? So it's just very quick to communicate back and forth between your engineering group as to what may be going on in a certain piece part. Yeah, and so, you know, please understand this is... Um, all aspects of the car, we're always, um, you know, remeasuring them, testing them. Okay, you know, did this whole all belong? Did this happen? So between our, our own machinists that will go back and, and mic it with dowels, uh, we'll, we'll obviously work with these guys and build, uh, or build our database uh, faster. And I thought, you know, we, um, we were over there doing some clutch stuff as soon as we came back. And, um, you know, that was on... Heck, we got back. I got the clutch here on Friday night. Monday morning, I was to you, and I, I basically begged them, hey, we're, uh, we need to check this stuff. We need to get it scanned for us. By Monday night, they had it turned around. By late Monday night, we were already working with manufacturing on, on re-engineering and um, you know, working with the guys either at TAP and then with the manufacturers actually going to cast or forge these parts for us. Um, you know, to get on them their information as fast as we can. Yeah, and the cool thing too is, not all the design work for the car is gonna be done in the lab, right? You're gonna do some work out in the field, you may do some work here in the fab shop, and when you do that, you may find a part that works really, really good. And in order to take that back to the design room and design it can be a real tedious process. That part can be brought to us in a matter of hours, we can have you a full field digital twin of that part that your designers can come back and and, and, and model it yeah, and model model. model off of it and that, that happens a lot you know the the fabricators um they'll take something and you know we'll we'll either cut well grind and that's why we don't paint the test cars 
Um, it's kind of sitting here in our NASCAR uh, test color body um, because we want to gather this information as fast as we can. We want to, you know, get it back to you guys, get it to the whoever's manufacturing the part for us, and uh, and get it into production as fast as we can. So I do appreciate, um, you know, Monday and Monday night, you guys, uh, you guys killed it for us, and no by Tuesday, you know, we're rocking and rolling, and basically we're we're back in business. So that's really cool. I do want to kind of poke through here, and I think you're going to give us a little demonstration site. Yeah, we can give you a little demo. Just a quick history about us. Uh, we started in 1997 out in California. Uh, I think our first sales office was the kitchen of one of our owners, actually. And it normally starts like that, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, since then, people have really locked up to the technology. They like it, and we've grown to about almost 100. We have offices in California, which is our headquarters, Michigan, Connecticut, North Carolina, and also Washington State. Well, excellent. I'm, I'm glad we got associated with you guys. It's, um, it's really helped our process a lot. And, you know, we've, we've now introduced you over to Joey Arrington and those guys yeah. with the engine stuff. And it's been, a, it's been a big help. So, I mean, Daniel can probably speak about it. You want to step in, Daniel, and just talk a little bit about it? He's going to spit out his gum. He's huh? <laughs> All right, watch out for the maze here. And then uh, I'll, let, I'll let Daniel talk about it just for a minute. Um, Daniel's been the lead engineer on, on this project. Um, I know he looks like a young man, but he has tons and tons of experience. And the, the kid is willing to learn, which is really cool. And um, obviously, we've got a we've got a monster here behind us with a speed UTV. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, a huge project, obviously, and a big undertaking. And uh, to get it done in this kind of time frame, we need every tool that's available to us in the, in the design world and design room. And especially when we're coming from complex surfaces, it's that are very difficult to measure directly. Things like the Capture 3D and their scanners help us in that design room get an accurate representation of a you know a complex 3D surface that would be impossible or, or take way too long to, to measure by hand. So it's a, it's a huge help with these guys here, uh, getting us the, the 3D points in the mesh cloud. And we can share that with the manufacturers and make modifications based on that and come up with the final product that you're seeing in the, in the final CAD now. Cool. And we walked you through final CAD a couple of days ago, and that was done through another group, uh, Hawk Ridge, who's who's been our, our um, SolidWorks supplier, yeah. and they, they built in our database with us. I know you guys had some meetings with them today, and I think we should probably get them in one time here, because I think bringing in partners that allows us to show you guys what we're doing. Um, we might lose some of you with the technology of it, but without this, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it. So Yeah, absolutely. All these partners we've got with Hawk Ridge and going to set up with our, our SolidWorks licenses and PDM for file management. Uh, it's what's made this project possible, uh, being able to collaborate with so many different designers on the same project. Yeah, and, you know, that comes back to, you know, I think a lot of this stuff, you know, being a race car driver in the beginning, it's helped me build relationships. And I think, um, you know, either through the engine shops or Gearbox, I mean, we've, you know, this is, this is a Robbie Gordon Speed UTV program, but if you look at the group of experts lined up behind us here, you know, I want to thank every, each and every one of you that have helped me uh, and helped us. And, you know, we, I, I know the people on the show here, the ones that know me well, I understand this is a 24-7 project. And trust me, we call our suppliers at all hours of the night as we catch problems. And um, day and night, uh, our suppliers and, and resources have been there for us, just like uh, Ray at Dugan's with his four-wheel drive uh, dyno. It's like, hey, can we use that? And I think I called him on a Friday. And we were on that thing on, on Sunday morning uh, on a weekend. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's seven days a week. We're digging on this thing. And uh, Daniel has, has really put his head down throughout this whole project. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna, we'll get back into Capture 3D. Um, just want to show kind of the surfaces. Yeah, let's let Jeff. Uh, yeah, let Jeff. We'll let Jeff it. Sure. handle it. Perfect. Yeah, so these are... You know, some of the reasons, and I think probably one of the biggest reasons why you came to us was, you know, you're looking to solve a lot of those immediate quality issues, right? You're designing something, you've got deadlines. It's really easy to communicate those those issues when you can see things in full, you know, full field. Um, also, it, it helps you in mistakes and, and assumptions, right? Because you, if you don't have the full field data, you can't make maybe sometimes the right decision. You may take a step forward and then two steps back, right, based on the components. Yeah, no, it's... um. And we make our fair share of mistakes. I mean, let, let's uh, let's be honest here. This is um, this is experience by trial and error, and this is how we've we've ended up with a package like this. And 
you know, I know everybody kind of laughed at me when I first said we're going to put a truck bed in the back of a UTV. But when you look at this thing behind me, it's it's pretty cool and it it flows and we got a room to haul a haul a load. Yeah, you can go to the next slide there. I did say haul a load. That's better than what I said a few weeks ago. Better than. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it. Yeah, you probably heard. These guys have been uh, rousing me uh, right before every show. Um, you know, I, I talked about the wheel and how it uh, how it swallowed the load. And, you know, I, I haven't heard. This thing hasn't stopped in weeks. And, you know, to be honest with you, some of those um, long nights, it just makes you laugh. So it's good. So these are, these are some of the scanners. We obviously brought uh, one of our smaller scanners with us today. Uh, it travels well, so we, so we brought it with us. You can go to the next one. Yeah, what, now what kind of scanner? Is this a black light, blue it's, light, white light? What do they call yeah, this? Good question. It's a blue light scanner. Um, we always get the question, why, why blue light? Why did you pick blue light? Well, it's one that, if you look in here, you know, you've got a lot of ambient light. Blue light's probably the most inert uh, light form. It's, can we change it to orange? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's orange around here. At yeah. least it's not a green light scanner, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so, yeah, with us we brought one of our, it's called the Atos Q, which is it's the latest product that was released this year from the, from the folks that we represent at GOM. And uh, it's, it's been a really great product for us. We actually used it to scan the, uh, the clutch parts the other day. Uh, so you're getting 12 million data points every time we take one scan. So you can imagine the, the volume of data that we're bringing in through this is, is tremendous. Yeah, I don't mean to stand so close to you, but I've got the mics, got the mics. so if you see me moving in on him, um, he is a nice looking guy, but it's not that way. It's because I want everybody to be able to hear this. Yeah, and so so we have the you know we have the scanner with us. So there's other ones too, and it, for the folks that are interested in learning more about this technology, you're obviously not going to learn everything tonight, right? We're going to give you a sample of what we've done, you know, with with Robbie and his team here. If there's more you want to see, you can go to our website, capture3d.com. You can find your way into a into a solution that will work for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, if we want, we can go. Ahead yeah, let's and show go. I'll, I'll go. I'll go move the uh, camera and come over there and try to get where you can, you can hear it, and I'll come back around the back side. There we go. Yes, steal the HDMI, and we'll go ahead and throw that up uh, on the big screen as well. So what we have here is uh, we have one of our spindles, and. Um, we're going to show you how we how we scan this, but there's more to just scanning it. At first, it's how it was designed, and then um, basically why we scan it is to make sure that the um, that the machining process is accurate based off what we designed. And I know I've lost a few of you guys here. You guys like watching high speed videos, but this is more of a an engineering uh, episode tonight on why we do certain things and then I got the spindle here we'll walk over and we'll talk about ball joints rod ends and monoballs and why we use certain functions in certain places so uh, can you tell me what you're doing there and so we'll go for it yeah perfect yep so we are going to scan this thing eight times real quick and show y'all how it kind of works so, uh, so we have a automated rotation Every time it gets the scan, spin to a degree that you input. You can kind of see the fringe patterns flying on there. That's kind of how it uh, collects all the data. More, a little more technical. You can see every scan, it'll populate on the screen in real time. And what we're doing here is this will pop the scan up and then we'll be able to go back and we'll check tolerances to see, um, hey, was the tooling maybe loaded in the machine wrong? You know, there's, it looks like the right part, but you program it the right way, but it still could be machined wrong based on how the tools are set because that's a really uh, critical process for the machinist to make sure he has all his, uh, his tools zeroed as well. Absolutely. We've got another screen that we've, we've consolidated all that into a more, you know, what you would see as a, Product. Look at there you go. This is your finished product after you've polygonized your uh, scan data. Uh, just a few quick, quick things. Did you scan that the whole thing while we were just right here? Yeah, well, right before. Okay, all right. About Ten minutes. And how long did it take to process this scan? Three minutes. Three minutes. Three so, minutes. 
from the time it takes the picture, three minutes to process, boom, we've got one of our spindles up there. Then Daniel can take this thing and he can import it into SolidWorks and we can check to see if the machine part is, that, is exactly what we intended the design to be. Because we could have a tie rod could be crashing with a CV boot or it could be hitting on a shock. And what are those red lines there? Does that kind of show us some stress analysis or no? In, Potential? Uh, yes, it is a surface comparison. So it's comparing your CAD surfaces to your mesh surfaces. So we're giving them the CAD and we put it in the mesh. Okay, perfect. So he took the CAD, he put it in here, and it basically shows us our hot spots and the things that we need to be looking at as we're designing a part. So one thing nice, and you know, we're, we're showing spindles, but all these tests, and I think I'll take the, the thing with Daniel here, all these tests have been on our new, on our new uh, 2021 speed UTV spindles. So Daniel, why don't we come over here and we'll, we'll show this, but basically that spindle that was just scanned, you see it in here, and basically it is uh, on, on the car. Now, you're gonna see on our test car, it has rod ends down here at the bottom. The reason why it has rod ends is our forgings have not, by the time we started building this car, did not come back. I will show you some of the finished forgings over here uh, in a minute, but the highest load section where the shock is mounted, sway bar is mounted, and the main load, the upper A-arm just long for the ride. All the loads on the bottom A-arm here, that one will actually be a monoball instead of a rod end, and I'll explain to you why we did that instead of a rod end down there. And the reason why is because the threads on the rod end are a fracture point. When it goes to a forging, it's all smooth. The monoball is encapsulated by two spiral locks, and then it's got its high angle misalignments as well. So this is the spindle. Uh, this is uh, the spindle has now um, a little over a thousand miles on it, and we will then evaluate all the bearings, all the all the surfaces, make sure that the hard anodized is not getting worn out. Certain things because we're not building a car, you know, just to get it off the showroom floor. We're building you guys something you can take out and have a blast with and build something that's very, very reliable. You can enjoy it with your family. So this is a spindle. Um, we, I will pop up a couple, a couple other um, things that we did um, on, the, on the scan. Is there some more you guys wanna, wanna chat about or what do you guys think? I think we've pretty much covered a lot, you know, a lot of the, the real basics and, and hopefully you guys have got an understanding of, of what we've done to help help kind of further the design process, expedite some of the communication. Um, we did pull some dimensions off of here, but you know, if you want to show those, we can. Otherwise, you can. If you want to show some dimensions up here, that's, that's totally good. Daniel, you want to spin those things around? And I will get my screen ready for some of the other uh, items that you have, have done for us as well. Yeah, so I mean, we just pulled a few just, you know, normal critical dimensions that you can find up, up over the center points. Over the center yeah. Point. Sorry about that, I'm, I'm a ways away. I'm sure people are having a hard time hearing. All good, Rob? Okay. Yeah, so here we just grabbed some of the, you know, kinematic points or normal attachment points that would usually be critical on a, on a steering knuckle like this. Uh, I think we've got, you know, the steering connection and then also your upper and lower uh, connection points, just a couple diameters on there. To show that it's you know goes beyond just producing a heat map, we can show features of size. Um, if you work in geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, you can pull any kind of data like that off of a report as well. Uh, so it's you know it's a really capable, powerful tool. Uh, I'm in the way. The, Sorry. Uh, All right. So now they're starting to boss me around. You see how this stuff is going? <laughs> Bring suppliers in. <laughs> They said I'm blocking the screen. Sorry about that, guys. Get out of the shot, right? So, yeah, so we're just looking at certain kinematic points here. Um, and the software goes, you know, beyond those heat maps. We can show any type of dimensional analysis that you may need as well. So there's, you know, it has a lot of different ways to, to communicate that information back to you, your engineers. Um, awesome. I think, you know, for us, it's, it's we wouldn't be able to rapid prototype the way we we're doing it without support like you guys over at Capture 3D. So thank you for coming in tonight. I will talk more about that when I flick back over to my slide and kind of show some clutch stuff that you guys have scanned for us. And then we're gonna take that scan data, modify it, and then we gotta put our support bearings, 
and a couple other items into it because it was all it was all done and it unfortunately it, it was not reliable enough for a production machine and this is part of the trial and error and this is why you do you do pre-production testing as well as uh, production testing yeah well hey thanks a lot for having us out here well uh, thank it's you been thanks a lot of fun to, thanks for coming in to kind of follow the the car from when we started talking a year ago right to the point where you guys are now i mean it's awesome well thank you awesome. and um yeah. i'm just curious how are those rc cars Really good. Really good, aren't they? They're up. Uh, they couldn't. The guys couldn't get them out of the boxes fast enough. No, it's it's a lot of fun. So um, they uh, they saw some of the RC cars. Like, hey, you think we can get some of those for some uh, some races in our facility? And you know, they for us uh, the RC cars have been some morale builders as well. You know, it's a um, little bit of instant gratification. It's amazing the uh, the beating you can put on those trucks and they keep running. And they've done it too. So, yeah, they, they cool. They stay running. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, I'm gonna plug back in. Um, could you actually switch my HDMI back? You guys are laughing at me. Why are you laughing at me? Why are you laughing at Casey? What's Casey doing? Think he can get it readjusted. Isn't that bitching what it does though? It's amazing um, the tools out here and technology. So uh, like I said, uh, you know, this is this is not capture three D um, you know. This is, uh, I, I pay them for their, their job they do for us, but they do a great job and I thought it would be awesome to, uh, to bring them in. So, um, I don't know what's going on or if I have lost my, it says it's connected. Uh, this one here, is it plugged back in? Huh. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's on. Lights on. Yeah, I don't know. Did we change it off the truck? There we go. Uh, let's do this. Let's. Um, uh, I don't have a phone. Can somebody bring me over a phone? We forgot the phone tonight. We got so. Um, Going in so many different directions, we forgot the phone. They'll get the phone ready. Uh, I will take phone calls. Um, caller five tonight. It says dome lights. No, we're not going to give dome lights tonight. Um, we're going to give a spare, spare tire and wheel. So you call in tonight, caller number five, spare tire and wheel uh, for your speed UTV. Again, caller number five, spare tire and wheel. And then I'm going to come back over to some of the, the capture 3D stuff. This is. Um, this is the tap clutch. Um, and this is the stuff that I want everybody to understand is once we identify a product that we want, um, we will then take this product and we have to put it in what we call manufacturable. Uh, I've seen people, oh, we're gonna have billet clutches on our, on our speed UTV. The answer is no, you're gonna have either a cast or forged clutch that the critical components will be the strongest we can possibly make them. They will be final machined after. And we are working with Dave and Alan from TAP that have been excellent. Uh, this group has been wonderful to work with and uh, we'll take their parts, turn them into a manufacturable part, something that we can um, build for a, a reasonable cost and be able to sell, you, sell to you. You guys can all go to the TAP um, website and look at what their high performance clutches sell for. And then you'd come back to me and say, how are you even gonna sell a car for you know, $32,000 like we originally offered. And um, we can't do that. So we got to take it and make it manufacturable. The guys from TAP uh, have agreed to a program with us and we're, we're pretty excited about it. Uh, yeah, let's go, we'll go right here, make some room. Perfect, thank you, Daniel. All right, we got the, the phone ringing. Um, hey, it's Robbie Gordon, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good, hang on one second. I'm gonna put you on park one for a minute. All right, sorry about that. Um, all right, so there is the secondary clutch. These are some profiles that we are working with, um, changing some ramp angles, some spring angles, as well as working on with tap on the bearing. I've told you guys this thing will be put into double shear um, with the power that the speed engine makes. Um, it's definitely gonna be pulling on the belts um, so we're integrating the, the, the pulley into here. And obviously this was a snowmobile clutch. And when it runs in 32 degree or less ambient temperature, you don't need big fans on it. 
But with what we're doing, we need fans because our ambient is 95, 110, 70, maybe 60. Very seldom are we driving down in the, the 40s and 50 degree temperature, at least me. Uh, and I know most of my guys are playing with these things in the desert, which is 110 ambient. So we've got to get surface area on here and we got to get some fans on here. And I think this is last video I had here. Boom. There's some examples of fans. And when we, you know, use partners like Capture 3D, we can get fan profiles and how those shapes change and how we can flow the air to be able to make it um, more efficient. But remember, that's all surface area as well. And when you put surface area on aluminum, doesn't matter if it's cast, billet, or forged, it displaces the heat and starts pulling the heat out of there, which lowers the belt temperature. So at our last test, uh, we had a maximum belt temp of 241 degrees, a little bit higher than we want, and that was with the belt cover open. So we've got to do a good job on the engineering side of it, getting the temperature out of the clutches so that we can lower the belt temperature, because we all know where the, the optimum temperature is in the belts. Uh, something very, very cool. And uh, if it's here, I will show that. That's a great question. Uh, is, it, is it on there? Oh, yeah. You're going to like this. Um, I got something special for you tonight. So you asked a uh, special tool. Yes, we will have a special tool. But the nice thing about this, um, this secondary clutch, basically we just come in with a little fork. We pull it. It presses it back and roll the belt right off it. Slap a new belt on. I'm gonna say it's gotta be less than maybe a minute to put a belt, maybe a minute and a half with hot temperatures. So um, that is definitely something that uh, we will have a speed tool for removing the belt. And the secondary clutch, the way it is, um, it's got some pretty cool features in it to be able to, um, to change that clutch belt fast. Obviously you still gotta get all your threads out of it if you snap one. Um, and that's, that's one of the biggest things, you gotta put these torque limiters in there so that the torque load is not so hard on the clutch that actually that absorbs some of that. So we're talking about clutches tonight. We'll continue to talk about clutches because that is obviously the hot topic right now at Speed UTV. But we have a solution and it's going through the manufacturing process. And I just ask that you guys and girls that have purchased your cars, be patient with us. Let us, let us resolve the issues. You guys knew we were going to have issues. Let us resolve them. Let us uh, get it manufactured the proper way so that you will get a reliable machine that doesn't break belts all the time. It's not broke down all the time. And that's one of the things that we're working on. So, you know, most of you guys have, have been um, very, very, very patient. The ones that uh, don't think uh, they, they can handle waiting anymore, give us a call. We'll talk, you, uh, we'll talk you out of it. We'll get your spot sold because the price is going up on Speed UTV on December 1st. So if you've already got a car ordered, you've already bought it at a discounted price, and the, the price is going up to full manufacturing price come December 1st. So keep in mind uh, people that have ordered or have not ordered. But if you look at someone that's ordered a car early um, compared to someone buying a car today, you know, you're, you're thousands and thousands of dollars in advantage on this. So um, be patient with us and let us build this car the right way. I'm going to take a call while Daniel's working on a, on a tool. Hey, it's Robbie Gordon. How you doing, buddy? Good, sorry to put you on hold. Go ahead. Yeah, you're with me. You're caller number one. Oh, nice. Um, you pretty much already answered it on the clutch, so um, I guess the next question is just when do you guys start testing the four-seater? Yeah, um, well, we, we have a four-seater. Uh, we have a two-seater. We picked this car because this is the middle of the road um, on the El Diablo. And what this allows us to do is basically we get to get a happy medium. Uh, I'm confident with the shocks, but we'll change some different spring rates uh, on the four-seater. But you'll see a four-seater out here running, um, you know, that late, late, late November, first week, December. You've seen the four-seater in our shows a couple weeks ago. Uh, we do have one, but right now this is where our focus is at because it's allowing us to identify these potential problems. Well, yeah, what, what was your question you were going to ask, if you don't mind? I was just curious on the clutches, how, if, if Taff was like the ones that are going to do the clutches and if you're having good luck with them. I've had excellent luck with, with Dave and the guys at Taff. They've been um, nothing but ultimate professionals. They, um, 
they were on the gas getting us parts. Um, you know, they, um, they implemented a, between the first test and the second test, they implemented a roller bearing on the front drive that allows it to not have any load. So you can just sit there and idle for, for minutes at the bottom of the hill without, you know, putting hot spots in your belt. A lot of their stuff was very high performance, but we've got to take a high performance product and turn it into a manufacturable product. And obviously some of that stuff is additional expense, but at the same time, we've got to give you guys something you can just, you know, grab the shifter, pop it into neutral, hang out, you know, figure out which way you want to go, do whatever you want to do without getting hot spots in your belt. Gotcha. So they, they did implement that on the primary. Secondary, we're continuing to learn with some of the stuff. And it's, um, it's honestly getting really, really good. It's, um, I'm impressed with the power. You know, a CVT just basically parks your motor at the optimum power band, and then it uses the shifting of the clutches to, to uh, deliver that peak power to the ground. Awesome. Well, thank you. And um, do you have a car ordered with us? Yeah, I do. All right, what number are you? Master 383. 383, you're one of the early ones. Yeah, all I ask is, you know, just, just be a little bit patient with us here. Uh, we've been very transparent with you guys, and we're showing you, I mean, you guys would be bummed if I delivered a car and it had clutch problems and we had recalls and stuff. So we're doing everything we can on our side, you know, day and night, trying to make this thing reliable. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right, sounds good, thanks. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for calling in tonight. Hey, uh, a couple quick questions for you. One would be from the field testing that you guys have done in the two-seater. Is there plans to do the same with the four-seater and just take what you've learned from the two-seater and incorporate that into the four-seater? Uh, obviously, we'll take what we learned from the two-seater, implement it into the four-seater like you suggested, um, but all the components... Um, when I mean all the components, every one of the components besides the chassis is pretty much interchangeable from one car to the other. So um, what we're doing here is, is allowing us, you know, it's, it's not different suspension, it's not different steering. There is literally nothing different um, between any car. Um, I can actually grab my phone real quick if you're on Insta and oh, Daniel will follow me. But these cars are the same from, from this point right here, from this body line, backwards, all the same motor mounts, all the same drivetrain, and then from the A post, from that forward, it just changes in the door section. So just the section where it says speed UTV is all that changes on all the cars. So every component, brakes, master cylinders, everything is the same uh, between a two seat, four seat, and a bandit. Excellent, okay, thank you for that, appreciate that. Uh, the other quick question I had was, so for a fully loaded car, stereo, lights, rock lights, dash lights, everything, is, is there enough room for that, for everything that's fully loaded, the car all the way out? Yeah, I mean, there's, um, you can pretty much do everything um, on the build. Um, you know, the alternators uh, got enough power to be able to handle it. Um, and that's been part of the process. That's why we got rid of the Magneto, is we know the people out in Arizona. I see you got a 602 number. When you guys go out the desert, you load them down. You got you got stereos, you got radios, you got pumper blowers, you got lights. You know, you put rock lights on. You do your fog lights. You know, there's so many different accessories that that people do to their machines, and that's the cool part about at Speed UTV. We're allowing you to customize your car right from the manufacturer instead of you know getting it and then making changes. Obviously, people can do it that way as well, um, but this is the first time you've been able to even choose your own graphic of what you want it to look like. And basically make it your own. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you for thank you for taking the call. Excited to uh, get the four seater here when it's when it's time. So, uh, master number eighteen twenty nine. Eighteen twenty nine. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And thank you for uh, for believing in us and being part of the program. Like I said, um, this is thirty four weeks. We basically showed you all engineering. You know, as soon as we started having components, we started sharing it with everybody. And I think it's just awesome uh, the responses. You know, I get I get some really really cool letters. I got a letter tonight. Um, from Daryl Smith, and I'll, I'll talk about that. Did you put that in here tonight? I made it in. Um, pretty cool. You know, I get, I get some people, when do I get my car? When do I get my car? And then I got guys, hey, build it right. You know, the last thing I want to do is uh, be working on it all the time. You know, you didn't buy this thing to get a suntan on your back. So 
um, as you're hunched over the engine. We're going to make sure this thing's reliable. And if you look at what we've done with the stadium super trucks, um, Casey and the guys have just made those basically bulletproof. And we leave it up to the driver at that point. And it's going to be the same thing here. Uh, I just ask that everybody, when you do drive these cars, you're careful with them because they are, they're fast and they're fun. And, uh, and, they, and it will sneak up on you quick. Well, thanks again, Robbie. Excited to uh, excited to get the four seater. Looking forward to it. Awesome job as always with you guys in the show and seeing you guys out at the stand show. So, looking forward to more. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Robbie. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How you doing? Hey, Robbie. What's funny? Hey, I got a couple questions for you. Yeah, no problem. How you doing, Tyler? Hey, good. Hey, uh, Robbie, I know you talked a little bit about, uh, are you guys back having an idea if you're going to give us the infrared uh, sensor up on the dash for the clutch for the belt temperature? I, I don't know that. You know, I know that was a conversation earlier. I've heard a lot of people ask about that. Uh, we will have that option available. I don't think it's going to be a production item. Uh, our goal is to make the clutches reliable um, so that you don't need that. And uh, that's what we've been working on really hard. Perfect. The other thing is, uh, I know I called in once before and talked to you, Robbie, but what I was actually talking about was the behind the uh, bumper heater, so the inline heater to blow heat through the uh, through the uh, dash. That will be available. That is definitely going to be an accessory that's available. Uh, it's discussed daily in the engineering room, and even to the point that um, the front whole. Um, Let's call it the headlight assembly area. Um, we're working so that stuff's integrated all the way over to the air conditioned car so that when a, when a dealer has replacement parts, if you crash your car, it's the same part on all the cars. And that might be something that you'd have just before you launch the uh, enclosed cars kind of thing? Yeah, we'll, 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 have the heat, the indoor, we'll have the indoor heater before the launch of the car. Um, as of right now, it looks like that's going to be the power steering cooler as well. So it'll be the temperature coming off of the power steering lines. Remember, we're running power steering lines all the way to the front of the car. I think I got to give that one to Daniel, right? That, um, Daniel, we, we're, we're going to run off of the turbo water line return, but then we're running all the way from the back of the car, all the way to the front of the car, all the way to the back of the car again. And if we do it on the low pressure side of the power steering servo return, it actually works as a power steering cooler It'll also work as a heater that'll go through your air ducts. And for the guys and girls that do not have an enclosed cab, you still have the vents inside your dash. And it'll have like vacuum style hoses that'll plug on those with a blower. But the blower is really going to blow through um, the hot return line on the power steering side. Perfect. Awesome. Can't wait, buddy. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for calling in. Sorry you didn't get a tire and wheel. Well, thank you. We are working hard. We're working day and night, um, you know, seven days a week. So, all right, cool. We'll look forward to it, buddy. Thank you. Have a great one, brother. All right, thanks. Well, thank you. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How you doing? Good. How are you tonight? Is this Jeffrey? It is. How's it going, Jeff? Oh, they said I screwed this up. Hold on, Jeff. Um, you were caller number five, even though I answered you number four. Uh, one guy dropped before you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, do you have a car? I do, for 950. Oh, I was going to say, if not, you at least had a tire and wheel to sit on. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. no, number 950, Master 950, um, you have now received a spare tire and wheel. Oh, Jeff, awesome. Thank you. Jeffrey, um, nine, Master 950, he said. Can I get your last name, Jeffrey? Downs. Downs, Jeffrey Downs. Does that sound like a familiar name, Ginger? Ginger's shaking her head. Yep, knows who you are. Yep, thanks, Ginger. He said, thank you, Ginger. <laughs> Perfect. No, hey, congratulations on, uh, on calling in tonight, and thank you for tuning into our weekly shows. I know tonight was more of a technical show, um, but, you know, I felt it was important to, you know, especially after this clutch conversation, you know, you guys want to know what we're doing to address the issues. We're, we're on it. And, 
I'm very, very fortunate. That's a helix there, Jeff. You want to bring that over? Sure. So this is a clutch helix. It was, uh, Jeff was just looking at it, and I'll pull it up over here. But this is uh, one of our helixes from the, uh, the XX because we actually changed the ramp design from the stock uh, secondary. So this is uh, some of the stuff that we continue, that we learned with with the double X, that it's going to allow us to continue to learn, obviously, with the speed UTV. But let me ask you your question tonight. I ordered a windshield, and I'm a little concerned because I live in Arizona about overheating and things like that. One thing I do on my current car is I have a fan override switch. And I was wondering if you guys had any thoughts about doing that. Yeah, the, the fans are, they will have overrides, uh, and they also will come on at a very low temperature. Um, and we have three fans um, that, um, that run off the radiators. And basically, if you've seen where our radiators are at, um, they're not really in the airflow. Um, they're more, you know, we're cooling it basically with the fans, but that's something that we did with the SST. We basically use the fan speed to cool the water, and it's, um, it's fully shrouded on the backside, so every bit of air that the fans receive, it's having to pull that air through the cores. And we've got a, a large enough square inch cores that we believe we're going to be fine, but, you know, you get to your 120-degree days with a windshield, I don't know if I'd want to be riding that UTV anyways. <laughs> true, true. Well, it's always nice to be with the groceries with in Arizona. So. No, it's awesome. You guys are very fortunate there. You guys can, um, you know, you can go and, and, and do your, your add-ons or whatever to make them street legal. But, you know, obviously our cars, um, like, like any UTV, it comes as, as an off-road vehicle. And then in Arizona, they allow you guys to put your accessories on them and, and convert them. Uh, but so I would say winter time to definitely be good. Uh, the windshield is going to be an easy uh, install removal process. It is a glass windshield inside of a frame, and it's uh, it's pretty easy to to pop it off. So it wouldn't be a a big process to uh, to take it out in your your hot summer days. But obviously the winter time, I know what you guys are doing out there and why you want to do that. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for your call in tonight. Uh, congratulations on getting a spare tire and wheel. All right, and then Daniel and me are going to walk over, and I'm going to um, do a quick clutch removal here, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more technical with uh, rod ends and monoballs and why we choose to, to use uh, the components we did on the Speed UTV. Perfect. Um, so this uh, is, is what we're going to use today um, to get the belt off, and cross my fingers it's going to work. Um, Daniel's going to help me here. We're going to allow us to pull that. Watch yourself in it. That belt came off in just a few seconds. So the belt is free here. Make sure that tap had built into theirs. And we will make a, a little trick of tools and a crow foot. But this at least allows us to, um, to install this belt at a very fast speed. Yep, hang on a second. Watch your hands, Dana. There you go. Take another bite of it. Bam. Back on. Clutch is back in action. And we're rolling again. So that was a question of how easy it's going to be. Uh, if you do have to change a belt, it should be something that's uh, fairly easy to do. All right. Is that back on? One, two, three. Don't know why we lost audio, but we're back in action again. That's why I went with the hard wire and I'm gonna trip myself with this thing. Awesome shot, Arizona. Arizona desert, uh, looking over the Colorado River after a day of testing. Um, body is uh, off it, car sitting there naked, but it was, uh, it was a good day of testing. So we said we were gonna give rock lights, I ended up giving a tire and wheel, that's a much better package. I'm glad he was a customer because he'd be uh, kicking tires if not. Uh, rod in versus spherical bearing. I'm going to zoom into this guy right here. This is what is in the lower pivot point on the suspension. This is a forged uh, knuckle here. Um, I've got one in my hand here, uh, forging that will pop in. That is what is welded into the trailing arm. And then the rod in. Monoball pops in, a monoball will pop in 
little sword clip right there. It's got its rubber boots. It's a sealed um, high angle monoball. And the reason why we use this versus this is this rod end is what we have in the upper, but it's not loaded. And down in the bottom, you wouldn't want to put this in shear load because I have broke these on the trailing arm on the trophy truck before. So we forged a, a knuckle here and basically pop the monoball inside of it with misalignments and hold it in. Now I go to my competition. Here is your front suspension component. Hmm. Looks like kind of a marble with a stick on the end of it. Um, and this is what holds the A-arms and spindles on your Polaris and Can-Ams. Too small. Competition, speed UTV. Or competition, speed UTV. So when people say, oh, your car's heavier, well, this is for a toy. This is for a speed UTV. The Crowfoot? Um, <laughs> yeah, it comes in your speed case. There is a crow's, crow foot in your speed case. Uh, there's actually a pry bar there. So if you've ordered a speed toolbox, um, it'll come in there. Uh, anybody that is a speed UTV customer, you guys get a massive discount on the speed toolbox. Uh, and then anybody that's not, they are for the full case, the Mac Daddy is $14.99, and we will have them available here in a couple weeks, and we'll have them in time for Christmas this year. So you would get a crow foot in there, but we will make something very cool that um, is easy with a little holder, just so you can pop that thing on there. As you saw, I was struggling a little bit. Daniel had his hands in there. I'd be afraid that thing will slip out. Obviously, um, we're sometimes professionals here, and it didn't slip out this time, but if it would have, it could have um, you know, caught Daniel's finger on the, on the clutch belt. So... Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll make something that's, uh, that's very safe for you guys and easy to use. Uh, Daryl Smith um, had some kind words tonight, actually. I talked to him on the phone. Um, this came in at 8.30. I went on the, on the call at, at 9 or on the show at 9 o'clock. And, you know, this is, uh, this is a guy that has uh, recently bought a car. I think he's into the 18 or 1900s. Um, and, you know, he just basically said... Um, don't let all the smack talk get us down. Uh, build what is reliable, and we got one shot to make an impression. So just be patient with us. Uh, we're going to get it right. Um, we've got the, the new clutches in process, and that is obviously a process. You know, we've, we've now scanned them. We've, we're modifying them. We're making tooling for them. Then they'll either come out of cast or forging for final machine, and we'll be running them. And as soon as we're running them, we'll let you know. Uh, in the meantime, We'll keep testing on our forge parts and keep making them more reliable and bringing down our belt temperatures. So thank you for uh, believing in us. And as you've seen what, what I've been able to do with the original Polaris RZR or the Textron Articat XX, you know that we're going to build a monster of machine, and I appreciate your support. So thank you for choosing Speed UTV. Thank you for turning into show number 34 tonight, and we'll be back next week for us. So oh, there's one more slide. One more slide. Don't go anywhere, he said. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, we'll be back next week again uh, with, um, with uh, another show. And this one will be actually coming from Baja as I head to Baja this weekend for the Baja 1000. And I got the unicorn back here behind the, uh, the screen here. And she's still, um, she's still, I wouldn't say she's on the operating table anymore, but she's on the recovering table as it's getting ready to get shoved in the truck. I showed you the body work early through. I think Kyle Green and, and Jennifer have killed it with the graphics on it. Love the way it turned out, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So this is something that hit last weekend. I think it's uh, absolutely crazy um, that SST can get this type of following. The only videos that I'm aware of in motorsports that get followings like this are very expensive Gincana videos or something like what BJ Baldwin does. But I think this one has surpassed at least the Baldwin one. And this is just our normal business of racing at Gold Coast. 36 million views in four days. Put that in perspective, NASCAR is a sport that I've been involved in a long time. NASCAR had 57 championship videos posted from last weekend. 
This is Chase Elliott, which is awesome. He won the championship. Congratulations to him in Napa. Sheldon Creed, my little buddy that came through SST. All those videos, six million views. And our crazy little SST video from 2017 that got posted on Saturday, 36 million views. So these are the type of things that we're implementing into our Speed UTV. The marketing is unbelievable. Scott, excellent job on this. I want to thank, um, obviously, CAMS and um, Supercars and Supercar TV over in Australia. They do a wonderful job. And then Matt Nalti and Sean Cermini. And then, obviously, my two actors, Sheldon Creed and Matt Bratton. That was some awesome driving. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. We'll see you next week from Baja. Peace out. Shop section. You are. Stand back. Through they come. High speed approach across the track to Sram. And again, it's oh. another one from Bradham. He had to do it. And now he's right on the back of the 2015 champ. Absolute. Make or break moment here. No fear whatsoever from these two young Traxxas drivers. Oh. Bradham to the inside. Smoke off both of their tires. Bump on three wheels right now. Headed towards the checkered flag. Only a few turns left to go, man. Through they come. So he's got a couple of chances. It'll be the run out of here and down to the Castrol hairpin. Past the wall cam on the final time right against the wall. A race for the ages here at Surface Paradise. He locks the brakes again. He's trying to defend the bottom line. And now Brabham tries to switch back. Brabham tries to go to the inside. Three wheels, a good feel as they bring it down to the chuckered flag. Traxxas on Traxxas. One last chicane. I'm expecting some huge explosive air coming off this Toyo tire and Traxxas ramps. That's the king has moved as well. Under control. Hang on, fellas. The checkered flag.